Welcome back to story time. And we are on the letter G. I always look forward to the letter G. You'll see why in a moment. But let's review our letters. So we had A, B, C, D, E. Last week we had F. Oops, no, F. <laughs> and now we have G. And remember we talked about it's like you're picking something up. So two fingers out to the side. So that is G. And it's good to review those. Even sometimes I, have, I forget. Our verse for today, and this is one of those that I also memorized when I was younger, is from Psalm 46, verse 1. It's the whole one today. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So the first word, God, starts with G. And I like the fact that it reminds us that, that He is who we should go to when we need strength or help. It says, We have three great enemies which seek to have us, sin, Satan, and our own evil hearts. There are many sinful things in the world today for our eyes to see and our ears to hear and also many sinful things to do. Satan is always trying to tempt us to sin. He tries to make sin not look so bad. And our evil hearts are willing to do evil rather than good. But there is something wonderful. Although our enemies are mighty, God is almighty. In Jesus Christ, God is a perfect refuge. He is the only safe place for us to hide to escape these powerful enemies. We must stay near to God. In James 4, 8, we read, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. How do we stay near to God? By praying to Him, repenting before Him, believing in Him, and worshiping Him. God is able to give these gifts to us. The closer we stay to God, the safer we will be. So, we will go to God because He is our refuge and our source of strength. Our book today, which we'll read in a second, we have a G, but let's see what things I brought. I love the letter G because I love gourds. And since it's the fall season, there are lots of gourds. And I like gourds because they're kind of like people. They're all different shapes and sizes. We have little ones that look like pumpkins. And then we have other ones that are lots of different colors and shapes that you can see on the table here. So I love decorating with gourds. Also gifts starts with G. God is the giver of all good gifts. I brought my gardening gloves. So when I work outside and I don't want to maybe get poked and things, I use my gardening gloves. Our next month we'll have Thanksgiving and I like how we give thanks. So we can be thinking about giving thanks. Someplace I go just about every day is a grocery store. So I have some bags from grocery stores. Something very, very small. And I know I have a bigger one, but I forgot to bring it. But is a geode. And a geode looks like a regular rock. So from the outside, it doesn't look like anything special. But a geode, when you crack it open and look inside, is beautiful. There's lots of usually crystals and sparkly colors, and so I love geodes. They are fun to find. And we have just one state that starts with G. So let's look and see if you can find it. It would be a bit of a drive. So if we're down here in Texas, I'd have to drive across Texas, across all these Gulf states, and there it is, Georgia. So there's our one state that starts with G, Georgia, way over there. And you can see this is the Gulf of Mexico, and that also starts with G. Our biography person for today is Jane Gray. It says, G is for garden, gown, and Lady Jane Gray, queen for nine days. Can you imagine only being queen for nine days? 
It says, when I was just a little girl, I taught myself Greek and Hebrew. I used to write letters to the reformers like Ulrich Zwingli. Skip ahead to Z and you'll see. I was a great niece to King Henry VIII, his son, Edward VI. Oops, sorry. I'm going to start again because it's not mm -hmm. six. That's a... I guess that is six. Okay, sorry. I'll just... <laughs> That's okay. It's you a can, Roman numeral. Yeah, <laughs> you can just start from the, the sentence where you... Okay, his yeah. son Edward. Also, I was a great niece to King Henry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was a great niece to King Henry VIII. His son, Edward VI, was the next king, a very godly king. Edward VI died after just a few years on the throne. Since I was part of the Reformation, I was put on the throne as England's queen. I only lasted nine days until Mary's army marched through the gates. Then I was put in the Tower of London. Just before I died as a martyr, I gave my sister my Bible. Inside it, I wrote, Rejoice in Christ as I do. Follow the steps of your Master Christ and take up your cross. So Lady Jane Grey. And I know there's lots of different books that have been written about her and also the Reformation coming up with... Our Reformation, All Hallows' Eve. Now we'll do our letter G book and see all the things that start with G. Little G had a box. I will find things that begin with my G sound, she said. I will put them in my sound box. Little G opened the gate and went into the garden. Little G found goats in the garden. Did she put the goats into her box? She did. Then little G found grass, lots and lots of green grass. She put the green grass into the box with the goats, but the goats ate it all up. Goats like to gobble up things. Little G found grapes, lots and lots of grapes. She put the grapes into the box, but the goats ate up all the grapes too. What could little G do? She found a gorilla. She put the gorilla into the box with the goats. Did the goats eat the gorilla? No. They look a little bit afraid. The goats grinned. The gorilla grinned too. Little G found a guitar. She played the guitar. The gorilla danced. Then the goats danced with the gorilla and everyone giggled. Little G found some glasses. She put the glasses on the goats. Then she found goggles. She put the goggles on the gorilla. Just then, a goose and a gander walked by. What funny goats! What a funny gorilla, said the goose and gander. Little G caught the goose and gander. You belong in my sound box, she said. The goose got into the box all by herself. I will give you a gift, she said. Then the goose laid an egg made of gold. All of it was made of gold. Little G looked around her garden. So we have guitar, goose, egg of gold, the gander, the gate, the grapes. What a great group of G sounds, she said, with goggles and glasses and goat and grass and gorilla. Can you read these words with little g? Glove, glass, grasshopper, game, goldfish, and globe. But little g has another sound in some words. It is a soft sound. Can you read these words? Listen for the soft g sound. Gingerbread, j, see it sounds like a j. Geranium, giraffe, gerbil. So G has two sounds, hard and soft. Our next book is about God and how he made us. And when we're together, normally we would sing songs. There's so many songs about God, like God is love, God is so good, um, give thanks to the Lord. So maybe you can sing some of those today. But let's read this book that says, God made me. Tall girls, small girls. God loves all girls. Snow boy, B 
Beach Boy. God loves each boy. Two, three, four kids. God loves more kids. Big and little, black and white, trees and sky, day and night. God made the stars, God made the sea, God made you, God made me. So God has made all things and we glorify him and thank him for that. Our next book is kind of funny. It's about the nearsighted giraffe and we hear that soft sound of G. And sometimes when we don't have our confidence from God, we can worry too much what others think. And that's what happened to this giraffe. But he's, been, he's going to do some kind of silly things. So let's see what happens to the nearsighted giraffe. Giraffe couldn't see very well. She tripped over a snake and got in a huge tangle. You need glasses, the other animals cried. So they made her a pair. I'm not wearing them, said Giraffe. A giraffe in glasses would look silly. And she walked off. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she banged her head on a branch. I'll wear a bicycle helmet, she said, to protect my head. So from then on, Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet. What's she doing, the animals ask each other. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she crashed into Rhino. I'll wear a bell on my tail, she said, then everyone will hear me coming. So Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet and a bell. How silly, Lion grumbled. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she hurt her foot on a rock. I'll wear boots, she said, that way my feet will be safe. So Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet, a bell, and boots. She's getting worse, Elephant whispered. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she sat on a thorny bush. I'll wear a pillow, she said. It will protect my bottom. So Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet, a bell, boots, and a pillow. How odd, everyone said. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she fell into the river. I'll wear an inflatable ring, she said, to keep me afloat if I fall in the water. She's crazy, Hippo laughed. So Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet, a bell, boots, a pillow, and an inflatable ring. Giraffe would not wear the glasses, even after she tumbled into a hole. I'll carry a ladder with me, she said. Then, if I fall in a hole, I'll be able to climb out. So Giraffe wore a bicycle helmet, a belt, boots, a pillow, and an inflatable ring, and she carried a ladder over her back. How ridiculous, everyone said. The other animals felt sorry for Giraffe. If only she could see herself, Cheetah said. One night, Cheetah had an idea. He swept up to Giraffe while she, oh, she he crept up to Giraffe while she was sleeping and put the glasses on her. So you can see him tiptoeing carefully on the branch. Arg! she screeched when she woke up and saw her reflection in a pool of water. Is that me? I look ridiculous. She took off the bicycle helmet, the bell, the boots, the pillow, the inflatable ring, and finally the ladder. Giraffe looked back in the pool and noticed the glasses perched on her nose. Hmm, she smiled, pleased. I look really good. Yes, you do, everyone cheered. Finally, able to see, Giraffe stepped over a ladybug and happily strolled off. So I think that's pretty funny. She didn't want to look silly, but she ended up looking really silly because she wouldn't wear glasses. But her friends loved her and helped her to see that she 
was beautiful in her glasses. Because we have Halloween coming up and All Hallows Eve or All Saints Eve coming up, I thought it'd be good to read this book, The Pumpkin Patch Parable. See that big red barn and those rolling green fields? That's where the farmer lives, way out in the country. It's so far out the streets don't even have stop signs. The farmer grows lots of different things in those fields. He grows tall green corn and big red tomatoes, long yellow squash, and little green peas. People eat that stuff for dinner. In the Bible it says, I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. John 15, 1. The best vegetables the farmer grows are pumpkins. They start out as flat oval seeds, almost as big as raisins. One hot June day, soon after school let out, the farmer planted pumpkin seeds, just like he did every summer. The seeds disappeared into the ground in nice, neat rows and grew there in the dark all through the 4th of July. Early one morning, a tiny green shoot quietly poked its way out of the soil. Soon a long green vine stretched across the ground. From that vine, little buds sprouted into wide green leaves. The leaves spread out flat to catch the August sun. Someday, those little green buds would turn into big orange pumpkins. But not yet. The patient farmer waited and waited. The pumpkins began to grow. How different they looked. Some were tall and lean. Others were short and round. Some had lumps and bumps. All of them were pumpkins. The Bible says, My hand made all things. All things are here because I made them, says the Lord. Isaiah 66, verse 2. October came at last. The sky was bright blue and the air was cooler and every night it got dark earlier than it did the night before. It was time for the farmer to harvest his pumpkin crop. The farmer's many workers brought lots of ripe pumpkins in from the fields. Which one would he choose first? The farmer picked up one large pumpkin, being very careful not to let it slip through his hands. Pumpkins are tough on the outside, but break into smithereens if you drop them. He washed off all the dirt, holding on tight. Next comes the messy part. Pumpkins are full of dozens of seeds and lots of slimy pulp. The farmer had a special plan for his chosen pumpkin, so the seeds and the slime had to go. Remember this verse we had for C? Create in me a pure heart, O God. Psalm 51.10. So he's cleaning out the insides of this pumpkin. He slowly slid a large knife right into the center of the pumpkin. The pumpkin didn't make a sound because vegetables don't talk. If they did talk, the pumpkin might have said, Ouch! Gently, the farmer cut a round hole in the top of the pumpkin and pulled on the stem. Squishy, stringy pulp waited for him inside. Yuck! The farmer pulled out all that slimy pulp and wrapped it up in a newspaper. Off to the compost pile it went, never to be seen again. Then something really exciting happened. The pumpkin got a new face. The verse in the Bible says, We all show the, glory, the Lord's glory, and we are being changed to be like Him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 the farmer carved a triangle for each eye. Pumpkins have eyes that don't blink or turn away. They see everything. He neatly carved a little square for a nose and then a big, wide smile. What happened next was wonderful. The farmer put a small white candle down inside the pumpkin and touched the wick with a flame. How that pumpkin glowed. As the sky grew darker, the pumpkin on the porch was shining brighter than ever. When people saw the smiling pumpkin, they smiled back. In the same way, you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so that they will praise your Father in heaven. Matthew 5:16. All the neighbors knew that once again the farmer had turned a simple pumpkin into a simply glorious sight. In the same way, God the Father offers His children the chance to be made new, full of joy, and full of light, shining like stars in a dark world. If anyone belongs to Christ, 
then he is made new. The old things have gone, everything is made new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So started out with seeds, grew into a pumpkin, and then a way to think about how God clean, cleans us through his son and that we would shine his light. Okay, today I had quite a few things over my shoulder. So what do you see behind me? Well, there's lots of things that you'd find at the grocery store, especially in the cereal aisle. Look at, we have granola, my favorite snack, graham crackers. We have grape nut flakes and instant grits. Have you tried any of those things? Maybe the next time if you go to the grocery store, you can look in the cereal aisle and see if, what else you see that starts with G. This week, maybe you can decorate with some gourds or paint some gourds or glitter some gourds. We like to put glitter on gourds too. Or maybe you can play grocery store. My kids used to do that. We would save containers and we have a little cash register we bought in Mexico and it's kind of fun to play grocery store. And again, be collecting things you find on the ground. This week we picked up some more acorn caps and we've been making felted wool acorns this week. So there's some fun things you can be, do, be doing and also maybe press some leaves. Next week we'll have some books showing pictures of how to do projects with leaves. So find something fun to do, give glory to God, and I will look forward to meeting with you next week. Let's close in prayer. Dear Father, you are great and glorious. Help us to know you more and your character and help us to be grateful in giving and help us to be in awe and wonder of the world you've created. And we thank you, Lord, for, again, your Son and your Holy Spirit and how you are our refuge and strength that we can go to you. We love you, Lord. Amen. See you next week. Mm -hmm.